Mr. Britters. Yes, Mr. Britters. <laughs> of course, Mr. Britters. No, we won't forget. It's in the diary for next Tuesday. Yes, I do look at my diary, Mr. Britters. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Britters. Mr. Britters? Um... <laughs> Mr. Britters? <laughs> Mr. Britters? Mm -hmm. You wanted to see me, Mr. Britters? Isn't that a beautiful sound, Gavin? Um... Yes. Sounds like seagulls, Mr. Britters. <laughs> no, not seagulls, Gavin. Now, why did I call you up here? Yes, I want everyone in the staff restroom right away, please. Yes, Mr. Bruce. Canapes, Ben. Come on, darling, they're your favourite smoked salmon blue caviar. <laughs> well, please yourself. Carol, what's up with Mr. Britters? He's acting very strangely. Well, I know. Ever since he's come back from his tour, he's had a sort of somewhat distant and, dare I say it, poetic look about him. Sadistic. Uh, no, thank you, no. Good. I, I don't get it. He's, he's up in his office now, listening to Sounds of the Sea. Mm. Carol, how are the staff enjoying my canapes? Oh, wonderful, Tim. I'm enjoying... Everyone's enjoying everyone. <laughs> you have to make one tiny little suggestion. Go on. The prawn parcels. Yes. Just a teeny weeny bit too much coriander. You're right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Carol, has my uh, case turned up yet? Yes. Came this morning. Excellent. Poulini Montrache, 25 quid a bottle, this stuff. That's a bit steep for a staff canteen, isn't it? Look, Tim? as long as I'm in charge, I want people to have the best on offer. Oh, no! My coco van! Mm -hmm. Tim, it's a staff meeting in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Come on. <laughs> now, as you know, last week I was sent by Brussels on a fact-finding tour of European leisure centres, and since I've come back, some of you have noticed that I've been rather dreamy and aloof. Yes, Mr. <laughs> Is everything all right? Yes, fine, thanks, Linda. But as your manager, I think it's only fair that I should explain why I have been behaving this way. It was while we were in the... I'm so sorry I'm late, Mr. Bittas. <laughs> we have osmosis in the downstairs toilets. <laughs> Just sit down, please, Colin. A murky, yet at the same time, teasingly transparent leg. It's really not out of one of the balls. Thank you, Colin. I've tried flushing it, but it only seems to make matters worse. <laughs> sit down, please, Colin. Now, to cut a long story short, it was on the Norwegian leg of our tour that it all happened. What happened? <laughs> I fell in love. In love? With Ingrid, the most divine creature you've ever seen. Does Mrs. Britters know about this? Oh, yes. Mrs. Britters is in love with her, too. <laughs> Don't you think the three of you should try and sort this out in private, Mr. Britters? No, Timothy. You're all part of it. <laughs> Allow me to show you a photograph of Ingrid. Mr. Prince, I don't think that's appropriate. I... Oh. It's a dolphin. That's right, Gavin. The sounds in my office that you thought were seagulls were in actual fact sounds of one of these beautiful creatures. Are you trying to tell us you're in love with a dolphin, Mr. Britters? That's right, Tim, yes. It'll be sheep next. <laughs> You see, it was while we are at the Sportsog for Luftzala in Oslo. The what? That's Norwegian for leisure centre, Julie. <laughs> Mrs Britters and I were invited to swim with Ingrid. Now, at first I was sceptical, never having bathed with a mammal before, but after two laps with Ingrid, <laughs> I was filled with the most extraordinary sense of well-being and love for my fellow human beings. What's a dolphin doing in the leisure centre, Mr. Britters? An intelligent question, Linda, and indeed one that I asked. Apparently, it's part of their occupational therapy program. The fact is that these creatures have the power to heal. Aren't you thinking of hamsters, Mr. Britters? <laughs> no, Timothy, I'm not. I'm here to tell you that Mrs. Britters was on a heavy course of antibiotics at the Are time. Are you sure they were antibiotics? What do you mean? Well, only the last time she was an antibiotic, she was convinced I was the first movement of Mendelssohn's violin concerto. <laughs> she happened to be allergic to penicillin. Mrs. Britters, after a couple of laps with Ingrid, needed the pills no longer. She was completely cured. And with my own eyes, I saw a little disabled child, all sad and forlorn. <laughs> after a couple of laps with Ingrid, she sprang out of the pool. <laughs> 
<laughs> with a new look of brightness upon her face. That is so beautiful. <laughs> It is indeed, Colin. And that is why next Tuesday is going to be Dolphin Day at Whitbury New South Legacy Centre. You mean we're going to have a dolphin in the pool? That's right, Gavin. I've ordered it already. I believe the people of Whitbury should benefit from swimming with one of these lovely creatures. I think that is a magnificent gesture, Mr Briggs. Thank you, Colin. The pool will, of course, have to be drained and filled with seawater. I've already made arrangements I'm sorry, Mr Briggs, I must protest. I really don't think we should promote keeping animals in captivity. Especially when they're being used for sordid public entertainment. Linda, I hardly call a day of healing sordid public entertainment. Healing, poppycock, is a day of cheap thrills. Right. Woo. Far <laughs> be it from me to ignore a protest from one of my staff members. We shall put it to the vote, shall we? All those in favour of Dolphin Day, raise their hands. All those against Dolphin Day, raise theirs. Right, yes, yeah, so I think you're outnumbered, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, before we get back to work, Mrs Normanton is on holiday. Timothy has kindly volunteered to take over the running of the staff canteen. I'd like to wish him luck. Actually, I've been going a week, not that anybody's noticed. Well, perhaps more people would turn up if you dropped your prices. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, no, just a minute. I, I do a £17 set menu, which I think is very reasonable. <laughs> and that includes a half carafe of wine. I always bring butties myself. Well, well, right, anyway, perhaps, Tim, you could do something nice for Dolphin Day. I'm rather partial to shepherd's pie myself. Told you it'd be sheep next. <laughs> I'll do my best, Mr. Brittis, but it won't be shepherd's pie. <laughs> Morning, Carol! <laughs> what? Welcome to Whitby Newtown Leisure Centre, Mr. Brittis. How can I help you? Has that brine delivery arrived yet? Yes, Mr. Brittis. They're pumping it through the back door. Excellent. <laughs> Got green bits in your teeth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Miss Brittis, as you're here, I'd like to show you something I did in my art evening class, especially for today. Very nice, Carol. Particularly like the submarine. Thank you. It's not a submarine. It's a dolphin. It's Mr. Brittis. I am rather busy at the moment, Penny. No, I found this girl wandering around the building. She says she's from Whitbury Comprehensive. Completely slipped my mind. You're here to see how a leisure centre works, aren't you? What's your name? Both me, Rollington. Rosemary what? Rosemary Rawlinson. She's rather shy. Right, well, if you're going to be with us for two weeks, I'm afraid you're going to have to learn to speak up, aren't you, Rosemary? Yes. Yes, Mr. Brittus. Yes, Mr. Brittus. A bit of a stickler for formality, Penny, particularly when it comes to young people. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Mr. Brittus. Just to say, I've managed to unblock the left-hand cubicle, but... Thank you, Colin. About time after four days. Rosemary, this is Mr. Colin Weatherby, one of my deputy managers. Uh, Colin, this is Rosemary Rawlinson, who's with us on a fortnight's work placement. How do you do, Rosemary? <laughs> Colin, I'd like you to look after Rosemary for me. Me, Mr. Brittas? I'll treat her like my own daughter. <laughs> Colin, be a bit sensitive. You've got a hideous speech impediment. <laughs> right, I've got a brine delivery to see you to. Carol! No eating on duty, please. <laughs> Julie, can you do us a favour? No. Oh, please, Julie, it's just a tiny little thing I want no. you to do. No! Now, here's your menus. Oh, thanks, Julie. Look, if you could just call the fishmongers, I've got to shoot off to the vegetable market before it closes. It'll cost you. Well, I've already given you 50 quid for typing these. Suit yourself. Well, thank you very much. Just when you need a friend to help you oh, out. Oh, all right. I'm too soft. That's my trouble. Oh, you're a sport, Julie. Look, I've ordered ten pounds of shark steaks for lunchtime. If you could just call to confirm the delivery. There's the number. Shark? Well, it's Dolphin Day, so I thought we'd do a special seafood menu. <laughs> it's lobster beast followed by filet de raca a la Bordelaise. You what? Well, it's a little recipe I picked up in Bordeaux. Shark marinated in white wine and oregano. It's delicious. Oh, Julie, you've missed off the circumflex accent. Ava. Yes, it's the little hat that goes over the A in Gateau. And it's a la carte, not a la crate. <laughs> there you go, I'll miss my aubergines. Don't forget the fishmonger, OK? Park Aquarium. Oh, hello. It's Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre here. Look, look, you have to speak up, love. I can't hear you. I said it's Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to confirm our order. What? What's that noise? Penguins. Is that the fishmonger? Damn! What? Penguins. What was that about fish? Oh, yeah. 
I'd like to order some shark. Well, shark, so you've changed your mind then. What? You don't want the dog. Oh. <laughs> Hello, are you there? Hello? So you want a shark then? Yeah, yeah, what? about ten pounds. The smallest we do is fifteen stone. Baby tiger shark. Fifteen stone? I suppose it could always freeze, though. Right? Shut up! What? Not you, them, they never stop. Oh, well, we'll just get it to us by lunchtime, OK? Bye! <laughs> What's wrong with Cod? As far as I can make out, Rosemary, this appears to be the cubicle that's causing the problem. <laughs> oh, dear. It's got worse. Still, in a strange sort of way, there's something quite beautiful about it. I think I'm going to be thick. <laughs> now, will you please be quiet? My children are trying to sleep. Morning, Carol. Has it arrived yet? Oh, welcome, Miss Brits. Has what arrived? The dolphin, of course. I think it's due around lunchtime. Lunchtime? Oh, I was sure Gordon said this morning. Oh, well, I'll have to have a sauna or something. <laughs> Carol, are those chickens? I'm afraid they are, Miss Brits. Your chickens? They were supposed to have been delivered by the back door. Good morning, my darling. Oh, my God, I'm... We can do without the farmyard impressions, thank you, Carol. Yes, Miss Brits. Anxious to be first in the queue for a dip with Wally? Who? Wally the dolphin. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, are you laying an egg? No, Mr. Brittus. They're Tim's chickens. Can I have a word, please, Mr. Brittus? Oh, I am rather busy at the moment, Linda. <clears throat> Mr. Brittus, I implore you to call off this dolphin thing. We've been through this, Linda. If you still wish to complain, there's a formal procedure. Which is? Put it in writing, in triplicate, copy to me, copy to head office, and one for yourself for reference. But that could take weeks. The dolphin is coming today. Well, too bad, Linda. Linda, twice round the pool with Wally, and you'll feel like a new woman. But that is... What's this? <laughs> Poor caged things. Apparently they're Tim's. Carol. Uh, Tim, just the man. What are these doing in reception? Tortilla, Mr. Riddus. What? Spanish omelette, my alternative menu for today. You see, I must have fresh eggs. <laughs> Such smooth, silky skin and eyes that just melt your heart. I've lost track. Is that the barman or the aerobics instructor? No, Ingrid, the dolphin. We just kept going round and round the pool and then I started getting these sensations. What sensations? The waves of energy going up and down my body. It was just amazing. <laughs> Sounds pretty dubious to me. No, no, it was a wonderful spiritual experience. I think. <laughs> the only trouble is, I just can't seem to look at Gordon the same way anymore. What do you mean? Well, it's just that every time we come to, you know, I keep fantasising he's got a beak and a dorsal fin. <laughs> come on, form a queue. Come on, friend of That's it, form a queue. Right, quiet down, please, everyone. Quiet down, ladies and gentlemen. I said quiet! <laughs> Right, now, my name is Gordon Britters, and I'd like to welcome you to this special day, a day of healing and harmony, where hopefully everyone will get a chance to swim with this divine creature. You know, we swam with the dolphins in Ireland. Yeah. was the most wonderful experience I ever had. <clears throat> Would you go to the back of the house? <laughs> I did say stop talking. Go on, there you go, back of the tube. The dolphin will be here in due course, ladies and gentlemen, all right? <clears throat> Yes, Julie, but are you sure you ordered them? Yes, thank you. Fine. Ten pounds of new potatoes, eight pounds of courgettes. I couldn't get organically grown, and no, I'm not going out again. Well, the shark steaks haven't turned up, so it's sautéed trout again. Get me two pounds of fresh shiitake mushrooms. Well, not again. I'm supposed to be helping Britta's in reception. Fine. I'll go myself. Nobody's helping me, but never mind. It's only Tim. <laughs> what mushrooms? Shiitake. No, Carol. Please, Mr. Goodman. Ben's been so looking forward to swimming with the dolphin all week. Carol, I cannot let Ben anywhere near the general public. Not with his record. But he's calmed down now, Mr. Bruce. Carol, I hardly called Dang and his Montessori teacher out of a second floor window, calming down. <laughs> Miss what, my sweet? The dolphin, you fool. No, doesn't get here till 12.30. Any time now. Is this the front of the queue? Uh, yes, it is, my darling. If you'd like to go to the back of the queue, please. <laughs> to the back of the queue? I'm your wife. Wife or no wife, Helen. You've got to wait your turn like everyone else, please. What is the point of being married to the manager if you can't even jump a flipping queue? <laughs> yeah, I'm from the Marine Park. Are you indeed? Well, you're one minute late. <clears throat> I get me. 
Take this man and his van round the back, please. Oh, Mr. Bristol, I was just going to, um... Take him round the back, please. <laughs> yes, of course, Mr. Bristol. <laughs> right, everyone. The good news is that Wally is on the premises. I've never seen one in the flesh before. I'm told they're really friendly. Friendly? First word that springs to mind. <laughs> they do get a lot of bad press, though, it has to be said. So I blame Steven Spielberg. Yes. Um, do you mind if I leave you to it? Only I promised our catering manager I'd get him some uh, shiitake. Eh? Hey? Mushrooms. Oh, now. Well, Linda Perkin, please leave your way to reception. Excuse me. It is just. Make your way to reception. She's supposed to have been here half an hour ago. I could page her again, Miss Pitts. Not much point, Carol. Where is that girl? Give us an S! Yes. Give us an A! Yes. Give us a D! Yes. Give us an I! Yes. Give us an S! Yes. And give us a T! Yes. What does that spell? Yes. Yes. Gabby, where's Linda? She's outside, Mr. Brittis. Well, tell her to come in here, please. We're understaffed as it is. She's leading a demonstration, Mr. Brittis. De what? I think you'd better get out there. I'm warning you, Linda, this could have serious implications for your job. I'm sorry, Mr. Brittis, but unless you hand over the dolphin to us, we'll be forced to take further action. Are you threatening me? I'm afraid I am, Mr. Brittis. Well, set, Mr. Brittis, we'll pick him up this afternoon. Right, thank you. Murderer! Let's get out of here, Charlie. Right, I want you lot off council property by the time I get back or I'm calling the police. I'll deal with you later, Linda. Right, everyone, this way, please. Mr. Bridges, what's got into Linda? Never mind Linda, Gavin. It's important that you and I stay focused so that people can enjoy the day. Right, into the pool, please, madam. Into the pool, please, young man. There we go. Are you sure you know what to do, Mr. Bridges? Yes, Gavin. They explained everything in Norway. It's quite simple, really. Right, if the rest of you would like to remain over by this small pool. Now, when the dolphin comes up to you, give them a little pat on the nose. Or look <laughs> They're very gentle creatures, so there's nothing to be afraid of. I want to take you around the pool. Just relax. Mr. Bridges. Let's get going, Gabby, shall we? Mr. Bridges, are you sure that's a dolphin? What? I mean, I thought dolphins looked sort of different. <laughs> looks like it. It's a shark. It's a shark! Shark! Nothing like the sound of people enjoying themselves. <laughs> Pass the bucket. This should do the trick. It's a mixture of battery acid, guava leaves, and Bulgarian cooking brandy. Nice. That's the one. Now, a quick test. And I'll tell Mr. Britness that the toilets are back in action. You stay there, Rosemary. I'll turn the tap off at the mains. OK? Gentlemen, if you would like to see my receptionist, she will provide you with a refund. And a canopy, Miss Miss. <laughs> you could have been killed. I do apologise about that, sir. You can apologise to my solicitors. <laughs> Gabby, what I want to know is how the shark got in there in the first place. You saw them put it in the pool. Yes, well, actually, Mr. Bridges. And I... another thing. What am I supposed to do? Tie a knot in it? What? The bloody toilets are out of order again. <laughs> hey? They're supposed to have been fixed. Gavin, you're in charge. Talk to him. Excuse me. Try the pig. Oh, Gavin. I should have buy the mushrooms, not pick them. I'll try to be ruined now. Chicken. Chicken tikka. <laughs> Linda, what are you doing? Setting them free. Well, don't. Hold him. Hey, <laughs> Sorry about this, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just in time. Rosemary, what's going on here? Where's Mr. Weatherby? Mr. Britters, you'd better come quick. Not now, Gavin. I'm dealing with an emergency. Well, there's a bit of an emergency outside, Mr. Britters. They've got Tim. Who's got Tim? Well, Linda and her lot. Rosemary, you look a dreadful sight. I want you washed and cleaned up. <laughs> Mr. Britters. <laughs> Hand him over, Linda. Will someone please get him over? I'm sorry, Tim. It wasn't my idea to put you in there. But we'll give you Tim if you give us a dolphin, Mr. Britus. I will not be blackmailed, Linda. Anyway, it's not a dolphin, it's a shark. It makes no difference to us. It's still a poor creature that wants to be set free. Help! I'm warning you, Linda. Either you let Tim go or I'm calling the police. Oh, help! Help! Oh, please, let me out! <laughs> and they won't release him till we give him back the shark. Yes, Constable, I did say shark. Gordon Britters. <laughs> no? Hello? <laughs> Judy, get the police station on the phone again for me, please. I'm busy. <laughs> A glass of fizzy water. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Bittles, but have you seen Rosemary? I am rather busy at the moment, Colin. And those toilets are in a proper state. I thought you said they'd been fixed. Good news on that front. When I was turning the water off, I discovered that what seemed to be a simple blockage was, in fact, a problem with the pressure differential caused by this. Lobster? <laughs> it must have escaped from the staff canteen. I found it nesting in the water tank just above the outflow pipe. M Mr. Bittles. Have you seen Rosemary at all? I told her to go and wash herself. Ah, she couldn't do that. You see, there's no water supply. I turned it off. Except in the pool, of course. And she wouldn't have gone in there because all those lucky people are swimming with that dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What's the matter, Mr. Bredas? Come with me, Colin. I'll tell you on the way. Hello, honey. You turned around nice and gently. Rosemary's all right, Mr. Bittles. <laughs> Look. She's here. Oh, Mrs. Rawlinson, please <laughs> take a seat. Thanks for coming at such short notice, Mrs. Rawlinson. I thought it best to talk to you in person. It's about Rosemary. What's the matter? Well... <laughs> She's disappeared. Disappeared? Where? We have searched everywhere, Mrs Rawlinson. There's no easy way of saying this, really. We can't be sure. But I'm afraid it looks as if Rosemary may have been eaten. <laughs> what? By a shark. Is this some kind of joke? No, I wish that it were, Mrs. Rawlinson. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> I think you better come with me. £10 refund for you, sir, thank you. £10 refund for you, madam, thank you. £10 refund for you, sir, thank you. £10 10. I beg your pardon? I lost 10p in the locker. Oh, have a canopy. And we will keep on looking, Mrs Rawlinson, I promise you that. <laughs> I do know how you feel. What I suggest you do is go home, have a cup of tea, put your feet up, take a magazine. <laughs> Searched everywhere. We did, Mr. Brittus. I found her huddled under the stairs. 
She's been in shock. Hardly surprising. It's not every day you come face to face with a flesh-eating fish. Oh, no, no, no. I've given her some tea. She's fine now. Oh, come on, love. Let's get you home. Mrs. Rawlinson. <laughs> Mrs. Rawlinson. <laughs> Linda! Bye. Linda, please let me out of here. These feathers are killing me. Oh. I can only apologise, Mrs. Rawlings. You haven't heard the last of this, Mr. Britus. I promise you. Hooray! End all captivity! Hooray! I'm warning you, Linda. <laughs> this is your last chance to release Ted. OK, Mr. Britus. Right, that's it. What? And I'd also like to apologise on behalf of all of us for any inconvenience we've caused you. I don't know what came over me. Well, I'm glad you've come to your senses, Linda. You and I need to have a serious chat. Yes, Mr. Britus. I'm really sorry, uh, Tim. It's uh, oh. uh, a really good uh, cause. Uh. Have a good day, then, Mr. Britus. I've got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> now, I can assure you, none of my staff would have even dreamt of changing the order without my consent. I shall expect a full refund for this. If I don't get one, I shall be taking. Hey, where's it gone? <laughs> what was that about a refund? Eighteen thousand pounds. Yes, well, apparently that's the cost of a baby tiger shark, Mr. British. <laughs> uh, there's also a letter from Huntley, Huntley, and Huntley. Oh. Um, solicitors, Mr. Britus, acting on behalf of a Mr. Castleford, who came on Dolphin Day and is suing us for attempted manslaughter. <laughs> um, but there is some good news, Mr. Britus. No, oh, yes, what's that? Well, Rosemary's mother has dropped the charges, Mr. Britus. Apparently, after her encounter with the shark, she stopped lisping, saved hundreds of pounds in speech therapy. Coming! You asked to see me, Mr. Britus. Hello, Gavin. How's Tim? Oh, pretty bad, thanks, but nothing ten weeks in traction can't cure. <laughs> Sit down, please, Linda. Now, I have considered your case, and I must admit I admire you for sticking by your principles. Do you? Having said that, you are guilty of a breach of discipline, let alone causing great physical and mental distress to one of your colleagues. Yes, Mr Brittis. I think the fairest thing to do is to give you an official caution. Thank you, Mr. Britus. However, I'm also going to ban you from my evening lectures for a period of one month. <laughs> <laughs> However, Linda, one thing does puzzle me. What's that, Mr. Britus? Whatever happened to that shark? Suppose we'll never know.